Switzerland is truly a unique country, especially in the context of Europe. Switzerland has a fierce independent streak to its personality and is not a member of the EU and has maintained a policy of official neutrality for longer than anyone can remember. These are just a few of the things that make Switzerland so fascinating. So brace yourself for even more because now we bring you the 10 things you didn't know about Switzerland. One of the most interesting features of Switzerland's political geography is its division into 26 cantons. Switzerland is rather unique in that it is officially known as the Swiss Confederacy and is the only state in Europe that is officially recognized as a confederacy of states. Each Swiss canton is considered a member state of the Greater Swiss Confederation. A canton can be described in the same manner as a province, state, or other administrative subdivisions found in most other countries. Each Swiss canton has, rather uniquely, its own constitution, legislature, government, and courts, and each canton is a sovereign state except with regards to matters of federal law. Despite this minor limitation, cantons are remarkably independent and are responsible for their own health care, welfare, law enforcement, education, and even retain the power of taxation. All of these areas of political life are also decided by Swiss citizens through a very robust direct democracy where the Swiss vote directly on almost all political matters. As with so many other things in Switzerland, this system seems very strange, but the Swiss have lived this way for hundreds of years and take great pride in the liberty they enjoy. Many people have heard about the infamous Swiss banking system, and by extension, Swiss bank accounts. Swiss bank accounts have been portrayed in movies as a safe haven for criminals and tax evaders, with Swiss bankers willing to go to jail for their unscrupulous and anonymous clients. While this isn't the case anymore, the Swiss banking system over the centuries was a curious institution that accomplished many impressive financial feats. In the past, the Swiss banking law of 1934 made it a criminal act for a Swiss bank to reveal the name of an account holder. The protections for bank account holders afforded under Swiss law are similar to confidentiality protections between doctors and patients, or lawyers and their clients. The Swiss banks in Geneva and Zurich served as safe havens for the wealth of dictators and despots, mobsters and arms dealers, corrupt officials and tax cheats of all kinds until 2015 when all this changed. On the 27th of May 2015, Switzerland signed an agreement with the EU that aligned Swiss bank practices with those of EU countries and ended their special secrecy that clients of Swiss banks had enjoyed in the past. Under the agreement, both Switzerland and EU countries automatically exchange information on the financial accounts of each other's residents. Numbered accounts, where the owner of a bank account are only identified by a secret number, thus protecting an individual's anonymity, has largely been done away with, leading the criminal element of the world to seek other countries, such as Hong Kong and Singapore, to shelter their black money. Singapore in particular has strengthened penalties for violators of bank secrecy and now imposes steeper fines and longer jail sentences for offenders in order to attract former Swiss banking clients. It is likely that the importance of the Swiss banking system in terms of servicing the global criminal underground will greatly decline in the coming century. Many countries have more than just one official language. Canada, for example, has two, French and English. But Switzerland has more than just two. In fact, it has four official languages, German, French, Italian, and Romanche. As might be expected, the languages are related to geographic areas. So in most of the east of Switzerland, people speak German, and in the west, most people speak French. Italian is spoken in the south, near the border to Italy, and Romanche, which is a unique Romance language, is spoken in the southeastern canton of Grisson. Romance in particular is interesting because very few people know anything about this unique language and the ethnic minority that speaks it. Romance is a descendant of the spoken Latin language of the Roman Empire, but over the centuries was heavily influenced by linguistic contact with the German language. As a result, Romance sounds like a unique yet nearly incomprehensible blend of European languages. Vai, Giovanni, differentes um, incumbenzas, da pintemps menos e you would think that with all these languages, the Swiss would be confused with their canton system and direct democracy, but this is not the case if you take the time to ask any Swiss person.
Like Austrian German, Swiss German is very, very different from German German, and the accent is unmistakable, so much so that it sounds like a completely different language. And it is. Swiss German's vocabulary is different, pronunciation is different, and so is the grammar. And unlike Austrian German, it's usually not possible for Germans to understand Swiss German. One of the key characteristics of Swiss German, called Schweizerdeutsch, is the preservation of some archaic features that are no longer present in Standard German. The best example of this is the sound ch, which is often found at the beginning of words, rather than just at the end and in the middle. For example, in Swiss German, the word for kitchen is Küche, but in Standard German, it is Küche. And many other words that start with a K in German start with a ch. Swiss German is the de facto language of Swiss German speakers within Switzerland, but when Swiss German speakers encounter Germans, they usually switch, and they will always use Hochdeutsch outside the context of Switzerland. Interestingly enough, Swiss German speakers have a bit of a complex concern in their language, because most Germans just consider it to be a barbaric dialect that sounds terrible. This in turn creates resentment towards Germans, and thus the cycle of dislike and distrust is born. Still, things aren't too bad and the Swiss will tolerate the Germans with their strange language for the most part, if only because they have to. One of the most iconic symbols of Switzerland is almost certainly the Alps. The towering and circular range of mountains is home to the tallest single peaks in Europe. Some of the most famous peaks are the Matterhorn and the Monte Rosa, which rise up to respectively 14,692 and 15,023 feet above sea level. The Alps offer a natural protective barrier against outsiders for Switzerland, which is why it has been theorized that the country has been able to maintain its position of neutrality for so long. Even before this, the Alps were known for halting the progress of the Carthaginian general Hannibal in his attempt to take Rome, resulting in catastrophic losses for him, simply because of the sheer massiveness of this impressive mountain range. From a geological perspective, the Alps are a medium-age mountain range, being neither young nor old when compared to such mountain ranges as the Appalachians or the Andes. And of course, people love to come to Switzerland to go skiing in the Alps, which is probably what they're most famous for. It's quite possible that no other mountain range in the world conjures up the same images of history, romance, and recreation as do the Alps, which largely lie in and around Switzerland. Most people do not realize that some of the best and most delicious food comes from Switzerland. What are some of these tasty morsels? Well, muesli for one, which is world famous as a mixture of oats and other grains, combined with nuts, seeds, fruit, and with so much variety that it would be impossible to do all the types of muesli justice here. Though suffice to say, muesli is known and appreciated well beyond the borders of Switzerland for its delicious and natural tastes, as well as its appeal to healthy living. And it doesn't just stop there. Fondue is a Swiss dish composed of melted cheese in a large pot that is heated under particular conditions and is beyond delicious, with people typically dipping bread into the mix for an incredible, awesome taste. And then there is the world-famous Swiss chocolate, which often covers entire aisles in Swiss supermarkets and has an international reputation for high quality and taste. One of Switzerland's best-kept secrets is its food, so fly on over and give it a taste. You won't regret it. When most people think of gun freaks, most people think of Americans, or Murricans as they're sometimes called, as the first in line in terms of gun ownership and use, but this might not be the most accurate view of things. Part of Swiss gun ownership goes back to traditions as far back as the post-Napoleonic Restoration. After the Swiss expelled their French conquerors, tradition and patriotism has kept gun ownership alive and well in Switzerland. As a consequence, most Swiss citizens have extensive firearms training, and most Swiss households also house multiple guns. What is striking, however, is the difference in crime when comparing Swiss gun culture to American gun culture, where injuries and fatalities are much higher. No one really knows the reasons for this, whether it is Switzerland's smaller size, careful regulation of firearms, different style of governance, or something else entirely, but regardless of the cause, Switzerland is held up as a role model of safe gun culture in the world, and it remains so to this day. In a not too dissimilar way to how Austrians and Germans don't really get along, Swiss people, particularly Swiss German speakers, tend not to like Germans very much. Germans are viewed as rude, intrusive, and ignorant of Swiss culture, 
and in recent decades, there has been a huge influx of Germans entering the Swiss labor market, sucking up jobs and making their presence known. This coupled by Germans' ignorance of Swiss history and politics, but conversely, Swiss people's better than average knowledge of German history and politics makes for a difficult situation. Then of course, there is the language issue. High German isn't really the de facto official language in Switzerland, and Germans sent a waltz into the country demanding that Swiss Germans speak their German, which breeds resentment and distrust, and with Germany's increasingly liberal policies and talking down to Switzerland, it's unlikely that relations will improve anytime soon. Even though Switzerland has always officially maintained a policy of neutrality, particularly during World War II, the issue is actually more complicated than one is led to believe. While Switzerland did not actively participate in National Socialism, it wasn't entirely neutral either. A great deal of property and gold that had been confiscated by the National Socialists from their victims ended up in Switzerland, where much of it remains today. During World War II, some of the more financially able victims of the National Socialists attempted to flee to Switzerland and were rejected and turned away, and in some cases Swiss officials actively aided and abetted in carrying out National Socialist objectives. So. While officially neutral, not everything that Switzerland has done has turned out this way. The greatest folk hero of the Swiss is surely William Tell, or in German, Wilhelm Tell. He is venerated as a human symbol of bravery against tyranny, and it is claimed he was a brilliant marksman to boot. The story, or so it goes, says that he was able to cleanly shoot an apple off the head of a child, with either a bow or a crossbow, depending on which version you read. He is credited either with actively resisting, encouraging rebellion against, or even assassinating some members of the Habsburgs as they sought to encroach on Swiss territory, although no exact date is known for when he lived, and thus, as is often the case with folk heroes, he transposes the centuries, allowing him to conveniently fit whatever narrative people want him to fit into. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out our other lists, and thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.